In video production, as with blacksmithing, sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone and try something new and different. Welcome to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anyone who is interested in the traditional art and craft of blacksmithing. Today, I thought I would step out of my comfort zone and try something a little bit different. I started this axe this morning, and now it's pretty much ready for hardening and tempering, and I thought I would bring you along and show you how I got to this point. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently than we usually do. I've been happy with the, the videos in general. I, I like the format, and I think it gets the point across. But like in any, anything in life, there's probably room for improvement. And without trying something a little different, a little off the wall, I may never discover where those improvements can be made. So this video is about trying different things with video. You'll get to see the axe. I'm not going to narrate it. I'm not going to talk about what I'm doing really. I'm just going to work on the axe, try different video techniques, and see if any of those techniques belong in future videos. They may not. This may be the only time we do stuff like this, or I might find a, a few of these little clips that are something I would like to try again, a dip, different camera angle, a different approach to the way I film it, something of that sort, and that's what this video is all about. So bear with me, stick it out till the end, I'm going to ask a few questions and I'd love it to get your opinion on what you think. But if you don't watch the whole thing, you're not going to be able to have an informed opinion. So I'd appreciate it if you'd watch the entire video. And then let me know what you think about some of the new, more artsy and fartsy approaches to videoing that we probably won't do all the time. But we'll see if people like it. And let's make this axe.
Well, that doesn't look exactly like my pattern does, but I think I'll be able to get it pretty close, and I've got a lot of grinding to do. So off to the grinder. Holy battle axes, Batman! Well, thank you for watching through to this point. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was kind of fun to shoot. And of course the battle axe was fun to make. This again is for the folks at the 10th Special Forces Group at Fort Carson and they're going to give it to somebody who is retiring and I need to have it done in the next day or two before I go to the Rocky Mountain Smiths Conference. So I had to get this done. I'm going to make a second one of these that we'll do as a more typical video where I'll talk about what I'm doing and why. So what was the point of this video? Why did I take this approach? Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, sometimes you have to try new things. You need to step out of your comfort zone Try new tools, new techniques, new approaches, just a whole new thought process every now and then, both in blacksmithing and in YouTube video production. And that's the only way you learn what works and what doesn't work. So as far as video production, which is really what this experiment is all about, I was going to make the axe anyways, and I didn't need to do it on video but I decided it would be fun to try some new things. But the point of this is that I thought I would experiment with some different equipment, different techniques. The other day I showed you the iPhone set up with the Rode video microphone and what it took to set that up. This entire video has been filmed with the iPhone and the Rode video micro microphone. Most of it was filmed without lights. I got the supplemental light set up for this just so we can see each other, well, so you can see me at the, the end of the video here. 
but I'm trying out whether I like using the cell phone for some of this or not. It certainly will not be my primary camera because it is a little bit more effort and a little more fiddly to use, but I think there might be some good things about it. It's lighter, it's more portable, it's easier to take other places, it's less obtrusive if there's other people in the room, if you're at something like a blacksmithing conference, a workshop demo, something like that. So I'm hoping that this does work out from that point of view. But as far as all of the funny edits, the odd camera angles, the little bit of fast forward or slow motion, I'm not sure if I did any fast forward, but whatever I, I did in the video that was a little bit more artistic, a little bit more cinematic, I think is the term that is popular right now, is just to see if I like it or see if you like it. And that's why I asked you to stick around to the end of the video. Did you find that interesting? And I don't mean that I would start doing entire videos this way, because I really don't think that's my thing. I want to do videos that are instructional, that you can educate yourself, where I explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it in most cases. But I think some of them start to drag a little bit. Some of them, by about halfway through the video, I have done everything that I'm going to do, and I'm just doing more of the same. It's just, you could film five minutes of it, rewind it, and watch it over again five times, and it'd be the same as filming 25 minutes of it. So if I mix up a few different camera angles, maybe some effects, does that make the video more interesting? Would you be more inclined to stick around and watch the entire video without getting bored halfway through a video and going somewhere else? Now when I try something new, whether it's blacksmithing in the kitchen or in video production, the first person that has to be happy with it, honestly, is me. If I don't like it, I'm not going to do it. And I do that in my shop. If somebody wants me to make something that I think is just an awful project, I'm not going to do it. I'm not so desperate for money that I will do any project that comes through the door, even if it makes me feel dirty doing it. And the same thing will apply then with the uh, video. If I watch this video and say, Ugh, I didn't like that at all, I won't do it. If I say, I love that, then I might do some of it. And I've seen other people's videos doing similar techniques. Specifically, Jake Fowler from Jake's Custom Knives, when he came by the other day, he did all of his video on a cell phone. He edits all of his video on a cell phone. And it's a very similar setup to what I've got now. And his videos are very artistic, very cinematic, and I enjoy watching his videos. They aren't really what I want to produce because I do want to be more educational and not just entertainment, but I think there's a, a line there where some of these other techniques and some of these other camera angles might be appropriate for the videos. So I'd like to hear what you think about it. That's the second input. If I'm happy with it, then you need to be happy with it. If you love it, but I hate it, then I'm probably not going to do it. But if I like it to some extent, and you like it to some extent, then I'm going to explore it a little bit further. And the other thing that enters into it is YouTube analytics. And most of you probably aren't aware of the analytics that creators have, but they have numbers for everything. And I can look at videos, and I can tell when people quit watching. I can watch, look at a video that 100% of the viewers are watching for the first two minutes and slowly it starts to fall off and about halfway through the video there's less than half of the people watching that started watching. So if people are getting bored because forging a taper for 20 minutes looks just like the first five minutes of forging a taper, I might need to mix things up to try and keep those people interested. If I'm trying to teach something and there's something of some good information towards the end of the video and people have tuned out, then I am not accomplishing what I set out to accomplish on YouTube, which is to help pass on the traditional art and craft of blacksmithing. So that's the third thing I have to look at is statistically, do people want to watch videos like this? Does, are people going to stick around further in a video of this nature? Or if I, I mix a few little things in here and there just to make it more interesting? Or do people still tune out at about 50% through the video? Most of my videos, there's only about 30% of you watching by the time we get to the end of the video. 
and that's not really my goal. I would like 100% of you to be watching at the end of the video because often the final details get pulled together at the end and if you watch to the end you understand why I did things the way I did them and there might be some new information presented at the end that you wouldn't have gotten if you quit halfway through. So my hope is people will watch all the way through. But again, people get bored when I talk and I'm talking too much. So once this cools down, I'm going to give it a final little grinding, make sure everything's cleared up and cleaned up. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to harden and temper it. But for now, I'm going to call it uh, a bit of an afternoon. I've got to go do a few other things before I come back and do that final grinding on this. I hope you did enjoy the video. I hope you can give it a thumbs up. If you have an opinion on the style of video or whether we should do any of this in future videos, that's what the comment section's for. Love it if you'd subscribe. You make time to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe. Do wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you for the next one, and it probably won't look like this.